Pirates coming off the bench to lead the tie to a 35-28 comeback victory in the SEC championship. Hurts yesterday reflecting on his journey this year. It's been a long year. You know, I can look back after the national championship game. You know, I'm in the hotel room with my parents, my brother and my sister, and you know, I'm, I'm in my, my parents, my mom and dad's arms crying. And I'm, I look up at my dad, I say, you know, what are we going to do now? And he, you know, he told me, he looked me in my eyes, he told me, he said, we're going to fight. It was very, very emotional for me to see Jalen have the opportunity and take advantage of it and our team and our fans respond to him in a positive way. All right, so look, it was fascinating being in Tuscaloosa yesterday and hearing from Jalen Hurts. We heard his comments there, very emotional. He's certainly been somebody that's been through a lot this season. After what he did, specifically with his arm, Greg, to lead Alabama to that SEC championship win, are we talking about some sort of quarterback controversy Don't with add, Alabama yeah. no, again? No, 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 no I'm no, doing no, it to no. you. I'm no, doing it to you. It. Here's the thing. <laughs> Tua is not do totally it, healthy. It, they girl, think it'll take it. two go. weeks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, no Jalen so Hurts should be healthy. the starter. Yeah, no, Jalen Hurts should be the starter. Let's throw some hot takes out there. No, Jalen oh, Hurts for oh, Heisman. Tua. Just kidding. No, Tua, Hold on, Tua, 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 Laura, I got Laura. your back. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. Oh, Greg, hold on. Laura, I got your back. Jalen Hurts had the same procedure that Tua Tungavailoa is having. Yes. Jalen Hurts will tell you he is still not 100%. So, he's 80%. Laura, I'm, yes, that. I'm, ba I'm mm -hmm. backing you up, Laura. I'm giving you more stats to add to this quarterback controversy, Greg. Now, yeah. now you may answer in your, okay, in your proper way. Sounds good. Even if he's at 90%, it's still Tua Tagovailoa. I'm sorry, because if I look at Oklahoma and their pass defense more specifically, they are very vulnerable through the air, and Tua Tagovailoa is the better thrower of the two. Now, has Jalen Hurts done a remarkable job improving throughout the course of the season? Yes. Is he a better player today than he was in August, than he was in January of last year? Absolutely. But it's Tua Tagovailoa's show. He's been their bread and butter all year. He's been a big reason why this offense has taken a new term with how they're now product, uh, producing points and, and yards. So it's to a show unless I've seen otherwise in, in order to whether or not he can go uh, from an injury standpoint. Nick Saban has recruited a lot of absolute studs and a lot of beasts and a lot of animals and a lot of first round picks. The best recruiting he job he's ever done is with Jalen Hurts. To keep a guy around that was 26 and 2 as a starter, to put him on the bench, to keep him engaged, to keep him as part of the team and not create any angst in the locker room, that is not an easy thing to do. Credit Jalen Hurts for keeping his head on straight. Credit Jalen Hurts for improving. Like it's one thing yeah. to be along for the ride and you get bitter because you watch somebody in front of you succeed and you know deep down you could do the same thing dude he throwing the football looked night and day better so awesome job by this whole program keeping it all together not surprising but you know what they might need both of them and here's the thing they don't win that game without Jalen Hurts coming into the game Tua was rattled Tua was not Tua that we've seen he wasn't completely healthy Jalen Hurts came in didn't have a game plan for him for Georgia second year in a row where the backup quarterback came in and did damage and won the ball game yeah, Jalen said that he had visualized coming in and saving his team at some point this season. He knew it would happen, and it did end up coming to fruition. So yep. since we're talking about Tua Tungavailoa, let's get a Nissan Heisman update. And this uh -oh. has all to do about the major shakeup, guys, with the race. Kyler Murray, your new favorite, leading the race with 46 votes, followed by Tua and Dwayne Haskins. So, Greg, what do we think about this with Kyler Murray having a pretty good game against Texas and maybe a potential Heisman moment there, especially that third down play that resulted in a touchdown pass. Yeah, and it went from being a very clear-cut decision in favor of Tua Tungabailoa to now being a coin toss, and that's kind of how I see it. Now, our votes, and I know Dave's a voter as well, I literally pressed send about 20 minutes ago, and they're due in 50 minutes. So I waited to the yeah, 11th hour. It was a, yeah, still, have you even pressed up. send yet? <laughs> it's still, right I still, I Don't press send. Don't press send. Don't I press send. <laughs> it's right there. It says submit my vote. I literally yeah, have it perfect. pulled up, yeah. and I'm almost Great. ready to pull the trigger. 
Burger, but I'm, I, I want to hear incredible. what Greg McElroy had to say first. I, that's all well, I wanted to hear first. <laughs> that's it. Fair enough. It, it's really hard. And if you want to go off of stats, it, it's probably Kyler. If you want to be a prisoner of the moment, it's probably Kyler. Even though Dwayne Haskins might have had the best performance of the three uh, on the weekend, if you also want to evaluate the entire body of work and how Tua performed and how he's really the first Alabama quarterback that we've seen play at a level like this, then I can see why he would garner a lot of consideration. But uh, it's a very difficult decision. I'm leaning in one direction, but it certainly was not made easy. And I'm sure it's probably very challenging for all voters as they evaluate this process. Laura, you got any syrup? He needs some syrup with that waffle. I mean, he just... Yeah, no, no I mean, waffle. I, 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 we're like, not, uh, Dave, if you actually read, what? if you read what it says, you are not read. allowed to divulge You are not allowed to divulge which way you voted. So I'm actually going to follow the rules, not tell you no, which David direction I'd go. David doesn't follow the rules. That's fine, well, but David does not follow it, the rules. He's, he's actually no going to do his vote live on TV <laughs> right now, and yeah. we're going to see exactly what he's doing. I can read. You see the shoe? It says Adidas. Listen. So, all right. Here's the thing. I was ready to, to, yeah. to put this Heisman Trophy in bubble wrap and send it to Tua weeks yeah. ago, a month ago. It, it, it was over. Kyler Murray has had a phenomenal year. Things yeah. to consider. Kyler Murray fans that want to throw stats in your face like crazy. Your league is full of stats. Your league yeah. is full of really bad defense. Tua is, doesn't have the numbers that Kyler has had. To do it in that league is a lot harder. To do it right. in a system now that hasn't done it like this ever before. To do it at the pace he was doing and the drives he was scoring was absolutely asinine. If you tell me who I don't want to play against more, it's number one. Because that guy with his feet is dynamic, with his arm is dynamic, and a system that is just absolutely a pain in the yeah. butt. And here's the thing. The final deciding factor in my mind, I'm not going to tell you who I voted for. Y'all read between whatever lines you want. The final deciding factor, one came up clutch in a championship game while one watched his backup perform and win a championship game. So to me, that is a huge factor in this voting process. Complete, uh, yeah, you didn't waffle at all, clearly, uh, based on the no, fact that you just told me how great both teams are. But I, I'll say this. So I value everything that he just said. And I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment. Like I said, I will not. I will evaluate all 13 games. And there's something about doing it against the best and doing it on a weekly basis against the best defenses in college football or some no of doubt. the best defenses. And that was what was the key determinant in my vote. So clearly, two guys that both respect the position, that respect what the seasons have been for both Kyler and Tua, and two guys that appear to be on opposite sides of the aisle in which direction mm. they voted. Don't press yeah. send. <laughs> yeah. No, look at Dave's well, shirtless picture. That's shocking. I know. Dave's of course background. he's got a shirtless <laughs> picture. Dave's Dave's himself himself shirtless as picture. His background. Right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me better. just make one more point about <laughs> Tua. He was injured on the first drive of that SEC championship game, yeah. and that was one of the reasons why he wasn't able to perform as well. But you're right. He was rattled in addition to that. Plenty more to come on College Football Live. Aren't you entertained? We're going to continue talking about Bill Snyder retiring this week and just his legacy at Kansas State, what he's meant to college football. That's coming up next. This Heisman Update is brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. College Football Live is presented by Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. And in part by... Tostitos, for every kind of fan. We're back on College Football Live, and after 27 seasons and two different stints at Kansas State, Bill Snyder is stepping down as head coach. He recorded nine seasons with at least 10 wins, including four straight from 97 to 2000. All other Kansas State coaches combined for just one such season. So as we welcome you back, Greg McElroy and David Pollack, the results speak for themselves here, guys. When you think about David Snyder, we'll start with you, Pollock. What comes to mind? Excuse me, Bill Snyder. Who's David Snyder? Bill. He doesn't exist. <laughs> we, we can we, we get confused a lot. We look very similar. Um, yeah, you two are like twins. <laughs> just, just, just look at the graph. Just look at the graphic, please. In all seriousness, and and listen, that's one of the greatest coaches of all time. And, and I know everybody wants to go championships, and you want to talk about that stuff. 
you don't win championships at Kansas State. What he did at Kansas State and how he improved Kansas State, not once. He retires. The place goes back to being a mess, comes back and fixes it again. He was one play in 98 away from playing for a national title at Kansas State. Um, could, had opportunities, Greg, to go elsewhere. And if he'd have went to LSU, like Nick Saban from Michigan State, he would have won national championships. He was the epitome of discipline. These teams were always one of the least penalized teams in the country, always played great special teams, always made you earn everything you get. I mean, he was he's literally, I know he's not going to go down in history as one of the best ever, but I honestly think he's one of the best coaches to ever coach. He's a great coach. Very few have done as much as he's done with less. And what I appreciate most about Bill Snyder is his willingness to do things differently. Like taking a job at Kansas State where it's very remote location, there's very little in-state talent, he had to figure out a way. He had said, All right, I'm going to go try to get transfer players. I'm going to go get yep. JUCO Junior players. College. I'm going yep. to bring them from within. I'm going to develop them. I'm going to maybe identify a guy that's being recruited as a corner by the big schools. I'm going to put him at quarterback. Like he has done a really good job of doing things differently. That coupled with the values that he instilled in every single one of his players was just remarkable. So uh, he leaves a legacy that is rivaling some of the best of this generation and for many generations before it. So many great things to be said about Bill Snyder. One of my favorite things about him is that when you're on the field with him as a sideline reporter for his game, he will never stop for the interview, so you must keep up with him. And there have been times when I've done Bill <laughs> Snyder games where I have been in a full sprint trying to keep up with him. He is always full of so much energy in life as he's led this Kansas State team. Plenty more to come on College Football Live, but we'll also tell you about the Home Depot College Football Awards, and that's Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, and it comes from the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Chris Fowler hosting with the game day crew. And Tuesday night, we'll have the Jimmy V Classic from Madison Square Garden. Oklahoma and Notre Dame square off for the first time ever at 7 p.m. Eastern. Then it's Florida and West Virginia. Tune in for that. More to come on College Football Live. You're watching College Football Live. Presented by Zip Recruiter. Yeah. Can't wait for the college football playoff. Also, some other great bowl games. And we've seen this trend start over the past few years where we've seen some notable players and potential first-round draft picks sit out of their bowl games. You can see them right here. Greedy Williams, Ed Oliver, Rashawn Gary, Nikhil Harry. Those are some names that are already declaring they're going to sit out. So we'll start with you, David. What do you think about this? Are you okay with it, or does it bother you? I mean, welcome to the real world. I mean, you can be the curmudgeon old man that doesn't accept it and say, back in my day, like, wow. <laughs> wow. I, I did not know that was coming, by the way. <laughs> I had no clue that was coming, just saying. But um, there's no way in heck you'd ever kept me out of a bowl game. Um, that was the 2005 Outback Bowl, for God's sakes, that meant absolutely nothing. But it meant, it meant something to me um, and my team. And so I, I don't like it, but... Listen, if, the, if there's one I can justify, it's Ed Oliver. They're playing a triple option team in the bowl game. Get the heck out of there, dog. Those are the worst. Cut yeah. the legs. Stay away. Like, nah, stay away. I'm out. He I'm also gone. got injured against triple option earlier this year. So, yes. I'm taking right. my coat think? off and leaving if I'm, if I'm him. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with it. This is just a trend that, that we have in college football where the individual is valued at the same level as the team, and I totally support it. Now, I couldn't imagine seeing my teammates playing and me not being out there voluntarily. Like, that That to me is a foreign thought, but things have changed oh, so much. Oh, look at much. that block by Greg McElroy. Yeah, look, look at that. Whoa. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry about Hey, no, let's get a hey, that's that's a that's a targeting the on 12 rainbow. right let's there. Let's go. That's a target. Uh, and oh, that's, and, oh, that's, un, that's unsportsmanlike, clearly. I mean, I'm just going crazy. But I no, I, I couldn't imagine not playing like playing against Michigan yeah. State going out a winner. That's a great feeling. Great way to put a cap on, on what was a pretty fun career. All right, we'll be back tomorrow at 4.30 on College Football Live. And as our parting gift to everyone, let's do a slow-mo react together. You guys with me? Yeah. Oh, wait, don't leave me hanging. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice one. That's the McElroy. <laughs>